<laughs> hey guys, it's Mr. Copus. How are you? How are you? How are you? I miss you. I hope you're all staying safe and inside during this uh, wonderful coronacation we're all having. So, um, I miss you guys and I really um, wanted to help you guys out during this, you know, this quarantine by giving you guys something fun and something artistic to do. So I thought I would make these short videos and I'll put one out every day and we'll walk through a lesson like we would normally at school. Um, but this is completely optional. This is just for fun. Um, this is just something to give you to do and to keep keep uh, you making some art while you're away. So let's get started, shall we? All right. So see money today have for you a really fun lesson. It's all about uh, watercolor. Watercolor is my favorite medium. Why? Because, well, it's one of those mediums that people kind of like uh, think about. When, when I think of watercolor, I always think of like flowers and real pretty landscapes. But I kind of like using it for more textural kind of paintings. And I like working against the medium. So I like trying to make it very textural, very dark, um, instead of keeping it light and flowery. But it's completely up to you how you use it. But uh, today I thought, you know, if you're going to use watercolor, you got to know some watercolor techniques. And there are tons of them. So I narrowed it down to eight techniques that will help us do a project this week. So let's get started. I want to keep it really simple. Watercolors you can find at any grocery store usually. Um, at my local grocery store, I found like a little art pack and it had watercolors in it and oil pastels and markers and color pencils and it was like twelve dollars and the other materials i'm going to use are some brushes that were like 99 cents i'm going to use some salt today i'm also going to use some rubbing alcohol and i'm going to use a piece of plastic wrap now the plastic wrap don't do that yeah don't do that yeah yeah you'll die don't do that um, <laughs> we're going to use this for some cool textures you're also going to need a paper towel, all right, and some water, and some Q-tips. Yay, Q-tips. And also, don't put these in your ear. No. No. No ear. Mm. All right. So, first thing I'm going to do is take my piece of paper. Now, I apologize. I don't have an overhead camera to show this to you on, so I'm going to try my best showing you right here. Now, the paper I got at the grocery store is not great paper. It's just kind of like computer paper. Very thin. So if you have thicker paper at home, like thicker white paper, that'd be much better. But, you know, we're on a budget here. So I'm gonna take my paper, I'm gonna fold it in half, I'm gonna hold it, hold it this way, horizontally. And I'm gonna fold it this way, make my ends meet, make those corners line up. And I always start, you know, in the center when I do a fold and work my way out. And then I'm gonna fold it one more time. Do the same thing, start in the center, out. And then one more time this way. Start in the center and then out to the edges. When I open it back up, I should have eight squares. Eight squares. I know I'm brilliant. Why am I brilliant? <laughs> because I'm sickening, right? Right? Okay, okay, here we go. Eight rectangles here, not squares. And uh, I'm going to take my Sharpie in the first one and I'm going to write down our first technique, which is a wash. W A S H. Wash. All right. And in that first rectangle, I'm gonna get this nice flathead brush I bought at Walmart. Um, you can use really any brush. Um, so if you only have like a small watercolor brush, that's fine, you can use that. But if you have a big flathead brush, it'd be perfect for this. So I'm gonna load it up with some water. Now, the biggest mistake I see students make with watercolor is they try to use too much of the color and not enough of the water. You need to flip that. You need to use more water, less color. Watercolor works in layers, so it shouldn't be real dark when you put it on. You should build up to that, uh, to that nice dark color. So, I'm going to load my brush up, get some water, and I'm going to get, I don't know, maybe a red. And I'm going to do a wash. And a wash is just like that, like you're washing. So, I'm just going to take it back and forth, all in one direction, keeping it going the same direction like this. Get some more water color and back and forth like this. And this is just a wash. Now a wash can be one color, it can be two colors. It's completely up to you, but it should be very light and airy. It should be, um, you should be able to see through the color and still see some of the white of the page. All right, now you can see this paper is not real good for watercolor. So don't go over it too much or you'll destroy the paper. 
All right, that's simple. Washes are simple. Now, why would we use a wash? Well, a wash is great for skies. It's good for backgrounds. Um, it's good sometimes to put down one color and work over top of it. So you have some kind of unifying color throughout your piece. Um, so there's a lot of different good reasons to use a wash, right? Because like a lot of white space usually is very boring. All right, so my next watercolor technique is wet on wet. Wet on wet. Sounds kind of funny, but really it sounds exactly what it is. So it sounds like exactly what it is. So I'm going to load my brush up with some water and I'm just going to puddle some water down into this rectangle. And I'll... Let it puddle up there. Now I'm gonna get some color on my brush. I'll use some blue. And then I'm simply, I'm gonna hold this up so you can kind of see it. As soon as I touch that, it should spread and uh, move around the page. Now, because this isn't the greatest watercolor paper, it kind of just, just stays in the puddle. But if you move your paper around, you can see that um, when the paper is already wet, the watercolor is free to go and do what it likes to do, and that's run around, and it can make some really cool textural backgrounds for you. Uh, again, why would you use a wet on wet? You could be using it to create a texture. You could use it to create some visual interest. Um, you can use it for backgrounds. It's really good for when you're painting water, if you're painting the sky, if you're painting clouds, all that kind of good stuff that comes from the wet on wet technique. All right, next one. Blend. B L. E and D, a blend. And blend is when you take two or more colors and you blend them together. It's pretty simple. So again, I'm gonna wash my brush, keep my paper towel here, make sure that I'm washing my brush each time so that way I don't get colors from the previous brushes or from the previous colors. So load it up and get some blue here. I'm gonna start at the top of my rectangle, move it here so you can see. And I'm gonna start at the top and pull it down like this. All right, and then I'm gonna get some, another color, wash my brush first, get some water on there, I'm gonna get some red. And I'm gonna start the opposite direction and pull up. And where the two colors meet, they should start blending. And if you know your color wheel, you know that red and blue make green. <laughs> Wrong, they make purple, right? So here you go, you can see right there, it makes a nice purple, that's a nice blend. Of course, blending is great because Nothing is really ever a solid color when you look at it. Even if you look at my t-shirt right now, you can see that this is a lighter blue to a darker navy blue. So if I want to really paint this realistically, I'd want to have two colors blending in together, right? And kind of, kind of creating a gradient between the two. All right, next technique. This is a fun technique. This is one of my favorites and it's called the salt technique. Salt. Don't be salty, Mr. Copies. <laughs> As you kids know, I'm very salty. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna grab some color. This time I'm gonna grab some green, my favorite color. And I'm gonna lay some green down. Maybe mix some blue in there, get it a little darker so you can see what I'm doing. And after I get the color down, I'm gonna take some salt, which I've already poured into here. And I'm gonna take my fingers and just kind of just Sprinkle salt onto the watercolor. And you're probably thinking, why in the world would I do that, Mr. Carpus? Well, salt acts uh, as an absorbent and it sucks up the water that you just put down and it leaves like this nice little pitted effect. Why would you want to do that? To create texture. Maybe if you're trying to create like uh, the appearance of uh, wood grain or maybe like the asphalt on a road or you're trying to create some sort of um, just some sort of texture on some on something that isn't smooth, right? So this will give a nice texture. I'll show you what that looks like at the end. All right, next one is another favorite of mine. And this one, we're gonna start off by putting down some color. And this time I wanna get it nice and dark so you can see what's gonna happen here. And this is gonna, we're gonna be using the Q-tips and I'm gonna dip my Q-tip into some rubbing alcohol, right? Put a little bit of rubbing alcohol on here. And let me move this here. As I touch it, you'll see, ooh, cool, it moves around. It makes it like these kind of concentric circles around every time I touch the alcohol to the watercolor. Again, it creates a new texture for us to use. So if you wanna create these really cool textures, it's a really great way to do it. All right, moving on to another really cool one. And this one is 
plastic wrap. Oh, I forgot to write this one down over here. Alcohol. Okay, this one is plastic wrap. And again, I'm going to, I'm sticking with my blue and green because it's a little darker so you guys can see on the camera. You can use any color you would like. I'm gonna load this rectangle up with some color. And then I'm gonna take this piece of plastic wrap that I had earlier, right? And I'll crumble it up here. Not too tight, I'm about the same size as my rectangle. And I'm just gonna apply it and push down into the paint. Just like that. And now I'm gonna leave it alone, not touch it. I'm gonna let it dry. What happens is that the plastic wrap, you know, it kind of sucks up some of the water into the, into the, what do you wanna call it, the little creases. And then when you pull it up, it creates this really cool, beautiful textured effect. Um, again, this texture can be used for many different things, all right? Next, we have a wax resist. So a wax resist is when you apply some sort of waxy material to your paper first and then paint over top of it. What happens is the paint will repel because water and oil don't mix. So if you have any kind of wax down or oily substance down on your paper, wherever that is, the water won't attach to it. So you can use like an oil pastel or you could use a... Uh, a white crayon to do this or any color really, but it's kind of cool when you do it with a white crayon because you can like actually draw something and you gotta push down pretty hard because you really want that to build up onto the paper. I'm just gonna draw a simple heart here. And then taking my brush, uh, dab that out. I'm gonna try some red this time, see if I can get some nice dark red here. And Again, because this is not great watercolor paper, it's kind of hard to see sometimes on here. But you'll see, as soon as I do this, boom, you see that heart there? Wherever that wax was put down, the watercolor will repel around it. Again, this is a really great way to make some textures. You can make snow this way. You could um, you could block out portions of the painting that you, don't, that you want to keep white. Um, and that way, the watercolor won't go there, okay? And the last one, <laughs> This one, oh, most art teachers hate this one. It's almost as bad as glitter. Fellow art teachers will know exactly what I'm talking about. And that is splatter. Now, splattering is fun. You just got to do it controlled so you don't get it everywhere. Because I'm sure your parents would not like you to be splattering paint all over their kitchen or your bedroom. So I'm going to load my brush up, get a lot of color on there. I'm going to use my thumb. There's a paper here so you can see what I'm doing. And then I'm just going to put my thumb on the top. I'm going to keep it really close to the paper. And I'm going to pull back and let it splatter right onto the page. All right. And you want to control that. You don't want it going everywhere. Because if you want to use that in a painting, you might want it in a certain section. But you don't want it all over. Right. And this is good, again, to create some textures. And you can use different colors to do this. You can overlap different colors. So I'll put a little red on there. And you can see you get a nice splatter effect. All right. So. There you have it, guys. Eight different watercolor techniques. So now, when you sit down and do a watercolor, you can do a lot more than just paint in by the numbers, right? You can actually make a really cool textural painting. And for the project we're gonna do, I wanna see you use each one of these different techniques in your painting to prove to me you know how to do it. Now, this is awesome because now you have all these tools to use. It's not just, you know, painting on paper. Now you could do a wash, you could do some wet and wet, you could do some blending, some salt, some alcohol, some plastic wrap, some wax resist, and a little splatter on there, and your paintings will look amazing. So try this tonight. Do it once. Um, keep it so that way we can refer back to it tomorrow. Um, our big project, what we're going to really do is, I know we've been hearing a lot about this coronavirus and something so small and invisible can affect our lives in such a great way. So I thought it'd be really cool if we combine this with some science and we look up and start understanding what single cell organisms are. So tomorrow, I want you to come to the virtual classroom prepared with um, a picture you find online of a single cell organism. And I want you to find a picture that's been labeled with all the different parts. Because what we're going to do is we're going to draw a really big single cell organism and we're going to use these different techniques to create different textures on each part of the cell. Um, and we're going to create some beautiful artwork that way. Then what we're going to do at the end of it is I'm going to have you guys write some um, some poetry or some, you know, kind of some free writing. 
and we're going to about how you feel these last couple weeks. And we're going to take our writing and we're going to incorporate that into the painting. And that way it can be kind of an expression of what we're going through right now. I think the best thing about art is it gives us a way to put out our feelings if we don't know how to use, which words to use, or maybe we don't know how to get it out of ourselves in any other way. So making art's a really great way for self-expression and to get out some of those feelings in our heads or some thoughts in our heads that we don't know how to get out in any other way. And I thought, what a great way during this, you know, really bizarre, odd time, because trust me, it's not just you, it's feeling weird. The adults are feeling weird. This is something we've never seen before. And I thought it'd be a really great way that we can make a piece of art about what we're going through right now. And you know, it's not all bad, right? It's kind of fun being able to stay home with our families and reconnect with them. I know I'm reconnecting with my daughter, my dog. <laughs> I'm really following my true passion in life, which is cuddling with my dog on the couch. I love it. I love it. I mean, it would be so much fun if we didn't have this kind of coronavirus hanging over us. So it is a really weird, weird, weird time. So I'll make the artwork along with you and then maybe we can take pictures of our artwork and we can post them online. Now remember, this is completely optional. You're not being graded for this. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. I just thought it would be something fun for us to do while we are uh, quarantining. <laughs> All right, kids. I will talk to you tomorrow. Miss you. Bye.